Good evening, fellas. Frankie Day here. Okay, guys, I just got off work a while back, and uh, I promise you I'll make another video this Monday. This will be the update. I'm going to build uh, the Combat Vacuform 148 scale PBM 3 Mariner flying boat. Okay, guys, that's uh, for video one. Uh, we're kind of wet a little bit here or there. I'll probably have a video of that tomorrow. I was supposed to have it yesterday, but other things around the house arrived, so it kind of took me away from the bench a little bit. So, so stay tuned for that one. Should have that one tomorrow uh, on the uh, Whitley. But for now, it's going to be video number two uh, from Wonder Building this uh, massive flying boat I'm building right here. Okay, guys, I like that. The vacuum form kits they uh, they all, they open a lot of doors. And they offer a, a lot for the modeler in mind. Nowadays, a lot of modelers nowadays don't, don't uh, like spend that, all that extra time on, on cutting stuff out of a carrier sheet and sanding here, sanding there, making scratch build parts. That's challenging right there, fellas, you know, doing all that, you know, and, uh, and um, a lot of, Nowadays, a lot of builders out there like to have a nice, beautiful kits like there are nowadays where you can put them together and relax. You have to worry about doing all the scratch build here and all the scratch building there. And all that time consuming, and pretty soon you end up with model boredom. So I'm bored doing this, I gotta do something else. But you know, a lot of modelers nowadays, they, uh, they don't want to take the time on uh, attacking something like this. This more or less made for somebody who has experience or full round vacuum forms before. Vacuum form kits are no different than injection mold kits, fellas. That's all, all the difference is that instead of being injection molded, these are vacuum form molded. And they leave a lot of outs in the molding itself because some kits, vacuum form kits, they give you bulkheads, formers, spars, and such like that, but they got to be replaced anyway because they ain't worth anything. You could use them for tin plates, that's why you use them for, but this kit gives you no formers, no nothing. There's two sheets. You get fuselage has, wing has, center wing has, floats, your pontoons, your stabilizers, and your, and your vertical stabilizer, your, your rudder pins. And the only transparency part you got is your astrodome, your canopy, and your uh, ball turret, which fits on the front of the, uh, uh, of the aircraft. Also, you got your bending turret, which fits aft. Also, your dorsal turret, which on top behind the trailing edge of the center wing, and uh, uh, somehow two-thirds up from the fuselage. Okay guys, let's take a whole last video. Uh, I went ahead and removed the fuselage sections off of the carrier sheets and taken 320 wet and dry trimite paper, wet and dry sandpaper, spray on some adhesive on it, and stick it on top of your work board. This little bike shift wood bench Work bit, work bench. I got it works fine with that because it's it's expendable. I go just throw it away and get another another piece of wood. But uh, as for now, that's what I did. You take a piece of your sandpaper, 320 sandpaper, spray on some adhesive or glue stick, whatever it is, and glue it on top of your your wooden bench or your cutting mat. You go ahead and, and you take your fuselage as that you come to carry your sheet. You lay them flat and use a lot of water. And you rub flat back and forth. You keep sanding back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. As you cut the plastic parts away from the carrier sheet, it leaves a separation from the from the uh, carrier sheet and actually the part itself how it was molded, because you see the mold line that separates from the part to the carrier sheet. So that part there's got to be removed by sanding back and forth, back and forth using water. Then checking your fuselage sections, and pretty soon you keep on doing it, and pretty soon you'll see that, that, that seam, that piece, that piece of sliver of plastic will, will disappear, will come off. And that's the molding uh, part of the uh, from the carrier sheet to the fuselage. Okay guys, uh, we'll come over here and uh, take a look at the, uh, the Mariner and we'll discuss a little more on it and uh, finish up the video. Okay guys, I know this camera's friendly, I'm always friendly, and uh, take it away, Frankie Day. Okay, fellas, uh, we'll zoom in just a tad more. I don't want to obscure the total entirety of the construction of this here flying boat. This is big, guys. This is a big, 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 big flying boat. Okay, right here, guys, as you can see, I removed the fuselage section from the carrier sheet. 
Now this is what I keep on telling you fellows about. When you build a vacuum pump kit, you got to put internal structures in here. If you don't, this thing is going to be uh, it's going to be lost. Look at this. See how see how flimsy it is right here, guys. Really, really flimsy. No spoil. It's a shell, and you got to put all your bulkheads and formers inside here. So I mean, that's the next thing on here. So anyway, I cut two fuselage halves off. And like I said before, guys, you take your sandpaper, simulating this piece of styrene here is a sandpaper. You put it on top of here, and you sand back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, and you'll see the, a piece of that flash will come off the bottom of the fuse, on the front of the fuselage. This is where the separation from the mold into the part itself. That part's got to really, be flat. Then you do the same thing on the other side of the fuse shot. You have to be constantly checking to see if they mate. Now a lot of you fellas say, well, Frank, since they ain't no darn locating holes here to glue the fuselage together, how do you propose to glue the fuselage together if you don't have no locating tabs? Answer is this. You put butt strips in here. Little pieces of butt strips right in here along the side of the top of the joints in the bottom of your uh, fuselage and the top of your joint and the top of your fuselage. But then when you seam it together, it, it, you got a you got a shelf. You have something there that'll support that fuselage from giving in like this. That way you can support. But make sure those butt strips are, are, are dried first before you attempt to glue the fuselage together. Okay, at this stage of construction, I went ahead and opened up the portholes and all the uh, the inspection uh, windows right here for viewing and everything. And when they've been opened up. And uh, you got little pips on here. These little pips got to be removed and sanded off. And there's a lot of dimples in the plastic during the uh, vacuum form process. That's got to be uh, that's got to be removed. You guys look very careful. I don't know if this camera picks it up. I'll I'll kind of move around. You guys will get the idea. See that? You can see a blemish over here. That's got to be filled with putty there. And you got these little tits sticking out of here. And these tits got to be sanded out. Flush. This thing's got a lot of good panel lines on here, like set portions quite well with old plus. So be sure to describe your your, uh, your panel lines and your fuselage when you're um, uh, during your your finishing process of priming and painting. Okay, guys, this is fuselage. This is the port side of the fuselage, and this is the starboard side of the fuselage. Stabber fuselage, side of the fuselage, it's besides like that on the port. And uh, last night, guys, I I, but I, I, glue, I didn't glue them together. I taped them together for dry fit, and it's, it's spot on. It's spot on. So I know this fuselage, this fuselage mates together quite well. All it needs is butt strips. But for now, next project, guys, is making the innards, making the um, making the formers, the internal structures formers and uh, detail parts. Now, I went ahead and took some sheet styrene, used my reliable chopper, to move this out of the way here, out of harm's way. And I made a whole bunch of these, I'm going to make a bunch tonight. These are about 330 seconds wide, these little strips here, styrene strips made. I cut up this piece of styrene right here, fellas, using, using a rule here. Measuring 330 seconds all the way down. Scoring very easy with your exacto knife, snap, 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 and pretty soon you got a bunch of these parts here. Now, that's what I want to know what we're going to do with this, Frank. Easy. I'm going to do this. I can use these as for ribbing for, for your internal, internal structures of, of the fuselage. As you can see right here, guys. We'll move in a little closer so you can see. Go, you guys will, you guys get the picture. This is all the detail it's going to put in here. Be all through here, and I'll make all my sub flooring. And uh, so I'm going to make a bunch of these chips. These are your, the inside of your, um, your, your, your fuselage, inside your lajeras. And with these lager, with these pieces here, um, work very nicely in uh, detailing this up. So. When you build a kit like this, you don't want to slap them together and put a piece of bulkhead here and a bulkhead there. I'm gonna put, uh, I'm not gonna put the Frankie Day all into this kit, but I'm gonna put more of what I planned on. I'm gonna make this, the inside of this kit, look like this. This 
This is my reference book on the Mariner right here. So I'm gonna make all these subflooring here. I'm gonna make, I'm gonna make the galley right there. There's the galley right there where the crew uh, gets hungry or something. They always one thing good about the flying boat crews, guys. They're like family, like brothers, and all family. And uh, everybody knew everybody's business because it was a close knit organization on a flying boat. Same thing aboard ship. Same thing anywhere. When you're in a close knit organization, you get to know everybody and their and their habits and everything else. So if things they can do good, things they can't do too good, they know they can do better somewhere else. So you get a guy that's a cook. Some guy worked at a greasy spoon before he joined the navy. And he said, "Look, I can cook. I can whip out anything." Okay, good. You're a cook. So oh, here's a galley. You got a cook right here, and his his, uh, his ballast station, his responsibility is a Ford turret right here, the ball turret, the Bendix turret here on the nose of the of the Mariner. That's his responsibility as a duty station. And also, he's, his job is to be a buoy catcher, too. He can catch the buoy. as hooked up to the, uh, the, the, the mooring buoy. Of course, you got your uh, officer, you got your, your flight deck, and, and I'm going to make this deck this way. I'm going to have a ladder going all the way down, all the way through this bulkhead here. And right here, there's another bulkhead here. It's probably, uh, it's probably some kind of a cargo room where they store cargo and everything. At, and, and I'm pretty sure that's what it is. And over here, at, that's bunks. So I got about four bunks I'm gonna build there too. So I'm not gonna take it, as far as I'm gonna take it, guys, is right to here. Now see the little, these little strips I made? These, it's gonna represent these little, these ribbings across here inside the interior of the fuselage. That's why I'm cutting a bunch of these up tonight. So I'm gonna follow the uh, panel lines of the kit to do this. And I'll be okay. And so this is a pretty good little reference manual for this uh, flying boat. So I'm going to be busy in this thing for a while, off and on. And uh, we'll keep you going for a while. And so that's as far as I got on the PBM Mariner, fellas. It's a big airplane, as you can tell, it's the size of my hand on this thing. It's, it's big enough. And uh, so that'll be it. I'll bring a swing the video around yours truly if you the video gentlemen oh here it is again guys yep so right after this video was loading up i'm gonna go ahead and make a bunch of these uh strips right here out of styrene and and uh, bundle them up and put them out of harm's way and tomorrow i'll start to <clears throat> start doing the internal structures this thing and probably by By this Wednesday, I'll have another video of this, and you'll probably see all the uh, bulkheads, all the structures inside there. Because, like I say, guys, we're building these vacuum form kits. See how spongy it is? You've got to put internal structures these things. As noted again in, in, in earlier in the video, you assemble these things without internal structures, you're going to have problems. The plane's going to be light as a ball spoil. It has nothing, no support, no, no, no substance. No nothing. So you want to be sure to add some details. That way we take it to the model shows. You can tell everybody we did that kit. So I put everything in this book right here. I, I put in this here. And I got proof on YouTube. So you guys know it's there. And I know it's there. Okay guys. The next video is going to be uh, tomorrow. I'm going to have a video tomorrow on the. Uh, excuse me guys. On, on the Whitley. So tonight I'm going to go ahead and make a bunch of these styrene strips and uh, set, set it aside and go ahead and uh, probably start making some templates for all, for the uh, for the formers inside the fuselage and the build will go on. Okay guys, this is Frankie Day signing off. God bless you guys. Thank you very much for your wonderful warm comments. I am honored each one of you fellas out there and uh, happy Molly. Make Mama happy and uh, make Godspeed and uh, Happy New Year, and then we're going to have a wonderful New Year with all these new models coming in and hangouts and builds. We're going to have them all. Okay, guys, Frankie Day out of here. And we guys catch you next video, so stay tuned tomorrow for the Whitley. Bye, fellas. God bless you, boys.